Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to attempt to fix a cassette tape. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with the cassette tape. Sitting in people's cars, out in the heat, 20, 30 plus years of abuse. But in this case it's something a little different I haven't seen. I'm going to be attempting to repair the Stone Temple Pilots Core cassette tape. And the reason I need to repair it is it has been shattered on one side it's cracked on the other side and I got this at a thrift store so it's no major problem if I can't fix it but it has screws in the corners of the cassette here and what I'm hoping to do is remove the tape from this put it in a donor shell and hopefully make it work now here I have my JVC TDW254 cassette deck, and it is a working cassette deck. To show that, I'm going to throw in Michael Jackson's Thriller, just to get a little touch and hopefully not get flagged. So it is a working cassette deck. When I put in, nervously, the Stone Temple Pilots cassette, and attempt to play it, nothing happens. I hear the motor try to go, doesn't turn it, nothing. It's trying to stop, it's trying to reverse play, and now I can't get it out. Hitting the eject button, nothing. So this happened to me before, and I had to mess with it a bit to get it out. I'm trying to fast forward, rewind, eventually it lets it go. So I don't really know what it's doing in there, possibly the spindles aren't turning, but as you can see, otherwise, perfectly fine functioning cassette deck. So in today's fix, see if we can get this going. All right, here we are over at the bench. Take a closer look at what we can do about this. You might be able to get a better view here on the damage. And as you saw, this or something else renders it unplayable. So hopefully putting this into a donor shell will help. Uh, in this case, I have an old UXS90. This is a type two tape. And it's a 90 minute tape, but I don't think that should matter. The important thing about this is it also has those screws around the corner just like the Stone Temple Pilots tape. So I'm hoping that'll make this an easy transition. Uh, and for curiosity's sake, this was formerly James Brown and Friends. James Brown, I'm Real. And then the other side, James Brown, I'm Real Continued. So good music anyway, but I'm willing to make the switch here if for nothing else than learning's sake so let's see if we can get this in this so to start off looks like we need a Phillips head using the iFixit Mako set I'm gonna start with the smallest see how that feels that actually feels great probably could go a size up but I think this is gonna do the trick so, let's see how easy or hard this is to get out. So far, so good. Any STP fans out there might be happy. Any James Brown fans out there might be insulted, but... We're just trying to do a little surgery here. Not judging music. Oh, we got one more here in the middle. Now the downside to doing this is the printed names on the shell will no longer be there. So that is the downside. This one wants to stay in there. That might be okay. I think that's okay. Maybe that holds something else. All right, so here we have the tape inside. This is a look at the shell. 
This is a little bit of just a dark, feels like plastic or something, thin plastic. And that's to make the letters more legible. As you can see, just transparent, it's a little harder to read. So, I think for now, let's take a look. Let's just pull out. Yeah, these just come out of there. I don't want to touch the tape too much and mess anything up. But it looks like I can just lift it out of there. So for the time being, I'm going to leave this as it is. It's another small screw there. So we're going to set that to the side. And pull in our James Brown UXS90. And give it a shot. This is a Sony tape. There's something about these old classic blanks. They just have a style to them. They just look cool. There's a lot of cool tapes. There was a moment in time where a lot of manufacturers had a sort of a war, I feel, for the best designs of cassette tapes and also VHS tapes. Whether it was the uh, tape themselves being a colored shell or something special, but the packaging on the outside, there is something nostalgic about that. The colors, the shapes. It was a moment in time that I enjoyed. I guess that would be like the early to mid 90s. And probably before, but I only have experience in those early to mid 90s. This comes off. Ooh. You got some red in there. See, they use a cool color and hide it behind the shell. That's pretty cool. I wish if, if we were going the other way, actually, if this was going into a clear shell, I would totally harvest those. But in this case, not necessary. So I'm going to remove James Brown. Hopefully he still feels good. Gonna bring in Stone Temple Pilots. Very carefully. This is not the process you want to do if you were just recently eating Cheetos, I believe. Hopefully that lines up. I feel like there was more of a lip on the one I'm taking it out of than there is here. I could be mistaken. Are these the same on both sides? Okay, that looks the same on both sides. Okay. I unraveled the tape here a little bit. See if I can do anything about that. Now, the thing is, I've never been able to listen to this tape. So the quality of the tape may not be great to begin with. But we will see. I feel like I'm making things worse right now. Yeah, definitely making things worse. Trying to get a good tight wrap on what I can and then see if I can wind it back once it's in there. Get this piece in there. I don't know if it'll work that way, but in theory it should, right? So far, so good. See a little bit of crimped parts on the tape. That could mean trouble audio-wise, but really I'm doing this just to see if I can do it. If I can put this in my cassette player and it's able to play at all, I consider that a win. Even if it's not going to be an everyday listen for me. So this is a bit of a slow going process, but I feel like I'm making progress from the spaghetti that I had just made out of it. getting there. Ok, 
Okay, it looks like the tape is folded and pinched on itself. I don't think that's my doing, though. I think this may have been chewed up at some point. don't think this is great for the tape. I'm just trying to flatten that little segment out. I feel like a really tiny DJ right now. Right, we're getting there. Once this is tight, I'll see if I can get everything back on track with how it should be should have looked at how this went through those spindles down there before pulling it out. I guess I can go to the go to the footage if I need to, but we'll see if we can figure it out. It's another little crimped part of tape there. This is some finicky stuff. I remember sights as a kid of running around with my friends or skateboarding around as a young preteen. Every now and then you would see a busted cassette tape on the cement and the tape would just be all over the place. Hmm. Now that we're getting closer to the end, it's getting a little bit harder. This folded over piece could be a problem. trying to use my finger up here to straighten out the tape as it spools in. This crossover makes it want to jump over the top and then when it does the rest of the tape follows as it would. This really makes you appreciate the rewind function. I'll give it a good rewind when and if I can get this together. This is the end of the tape here and this is when it's getting tricky. Just get that to rotate how it should. I don't think it did. Yeah, it's crossed over up here. One spot really does not want to rewind here. See, it's jumping over there at the top left. I wonder if the thickness of cassette shells is always the same. I guess it would have to be. 
The reason I ask that is I'm hoping this is tight enough to hold this together in the same way it would have in the original case. I don't know if there's any weird compatibility issues or anything like that. With my index finger on my right hand, I'm just holding it against the edge of the tape. So it has no choice but to straighten as I wheel it. This is the part I'm afraid of, though. Getting this spooled around everything that's got to be spooled around. I believe it goes around the peg and then around the spindle. I don't know for sure. Otherwise, why would the peg be there? I don't see anything on the other side of the shell specifically for that. So it's got to go around that, around this. And I believe it comes down here. There's two pins here. I know this goes in front of the little sponge, but I don't know if it also goes in front of those pins or not. It seems like it would. So I'm going to start there. Need to get a pull a little bit of slack out. I'm worried about doing that, but I have to, so we might have to redo a little bit of that. All right, hopefully, that's enough. I wasn't really sure what to expect. I've seen tapes open before, but I've never paid a lot of attention to it. You know, not enough to where I know what goes behind and in front of a post and all this stuff. So just kind of figuring it out as I go here. As is much of what this channel is going to be. You know what, now that I'm looking at it, I think it just goes straight across here. Off of this spindle. Like that. I believe. I believe. And I thought about busting out the tweezers here. I don't have plastic tweezers, only metal. And I don't want to mangle this with metal. Because if I crimp part of it or something, that's just doing more damage. And as we saw when we were spinning it, re-spooling it, there's already issues with that. All right, I'm gonna get this in here already. Just try to get it roughly in where it needs to be. And take it from there. This would sit on that. I also don't want to use my screwdriver here 
It's magnetic. Magnets are no good for tape. Oh no, don't unwind on me now. Yeah, it's wanting to spring up out of there. The second I let go. Mm. Yeah. Don't know what I could do about that. I know tension would stop that, but it's hard to have tension when it's not really lined up yet. Really wondering about this post, but I'm going to say it goes on the outside of it. This. Hold on. Let's make sure this didn't flip over in the process. That could be part of it. I think, I think that might be part of the issue there. If that's flipped over, that's going to make it keep wanting to jump out. Now that we flipped it, we might be all right again. If I can get this stuff in place and let go to where it doesn't fly all over, I might go crack open another cassette tape real quick and check how it works inside of that one, a known working one. Again, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but this is a little more tedious than I was thinking it was going to be. I love the Stone Temple Pilots and all. But I don't know about all this. Get a little more tension on there. It was around the post, to the left, around the red spindle, into this slot. Slot follows all the way across. There's two little notches here and another pin I have it coming in front of. It's in front of the sponge, in front of this post, in between, across into the spindle, and into there. Oh, I'm going to let go. Okay, very gently going to move this. All right, I'm going to be right back with another cassette tape. See if I can just double check that that's the route it's supposed to take. All right, and I'm back with Jethro Tull Aqualong. And it also has the screws and seems similar. I might not even have to open it with the clear shell. Yeah, it looks like it does go around the pins how I have it here into the spindle. From what I can tell, I have it correct in this other case here. Make sure nothing's crossed over or anything weird. I think I'm okay. I think we're good. I'm going to very carefully put the other half of the shell on. Before I fully secure it, I'm gonna make sure The spindles seem to be on there. And they do. Okay. 
Just double checking that nothing dislodged. Everything seems to be as it should. So, let's put it back together. And hopefully, in no time, we will get to hear Stone Temple Pilots and my cassette deck won't get stuck shut with questionable tapes inside. Which is really what everybody in, in life wants. You know, there's fortune, there's fame and everything, but being able to insert and remove cassette tapes at will, that's living the dream. That one's not threading great. Back it out and put it back in. I don't need to really crank on these, I don't think. Just enough. To get them in there. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but as the tape has come out a little bit, I see that crossover happen. So that might stop this whole thing no matter what. So I rewound it, and it looks tight. Now I'm going to bring it forward. And it looks like there's a problem with the right spindle. So I don't know what that problem is. Thankfully this has a larger window. So let's see. It might be inserted wrong. But it didn't seem like it to me. When I'm doing this now, it does. Seems to wind fine this direction. Well, I guess that makes sense. It wouldn't need to wind the other direction unless you're rewinding. So there's part of the crimped cassette that just went by. Now that might come through as just some funky audio when this thing is playing. But I'm not sure how well you can see this there we go all right so the the tape is acting a bit funky in there everything seems just a little too loose that's where it stops and then to play the tape I go like this it seems like it's crossing over. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. Maybe I'm turning the wrong direction on the right side there. So that would be rewound. This is the direction I thought it would go to play. And it looks like it does. All right, well, that's the best I can do for now. So, I guess moment of truth. Let's see if it works. All right, and we are back over here at the cassette player for the moment of truth. We have our newly, I don't want to say fixed yet, but our, our newly Frankenstein Stone Temple Pilots core tape. Don't mind that. A little bit of foam core lighting falling down. Gonna attempt to rewind it. It didn't move. So it may either be rewound or stuck still. 
Can we still open the door? We can. All right. The spindles are not moving and it just engaged the auto stop. Try again. Engaged auto stop again. As you can see, my timer is also not moving with the tape. I'm gonna flip it around and attempt to rewind. Uh, it's moving in there. All right, let's stop and play. Beautiful, just like I remember. So that may be a problem, but that's more than I can get out of the other tape. This side does not want to go at all. I'm rewinding now, and it looks like it is indeed rewinding. I'm gonna play. But it is not moving forward. So one side of the tape is playing and the other side playing poorly, mind you, and the other side of the tape is not playing. So I'm wondering, did I do something wrong or is this just a lost cause? As I said, the tape did look a bit warped and messed up in there. So I flipped it around. Gonna rewind it a bit. It's definitely rewinding. Okay, that should be enough to where either side should be in music. And let's turn the volume down a little bit and then listen. Okay, that's something. And this side. Tape looks not exploded. And still this side will give me nothing. Huh. And it is spinning in there right now. I see motion on the cassette, but no sound. Yet on this side, That is working. So I really don't know. This is new to me. I always thought that it either a cassette would either work or not. I didn't imagine that it wouldn't. That side is fine. Quote unquote fine. And absolutely nothing on this side, despite the fact that it's it's running. So I hate to end on this note, but I'm not sure what else I could do. It seems like it's in the housing. It's moving. Even if I did get something wrong, it was still playing on one side. So I don't quite understand how this could happen. I doubt that there's... Yeah, there's no way that they cut the tape that short on one side. Sometimes, if they're replicating sides of a vinyl record, one side will have a lot of silence because that's where you would have flipped the record. But with that much tape, I really highly doubt that that would be the case. But, if it were, 
I'm going to fast forward to where there's somewhat equal tape on both spools because there's no way that would be the case then. I got to say, this has got me stumped though. Looks like it's fast forwarding smoothly with no issues. I hear no sounds or obvious crinkling. I'm going to stop there. It's a good amount of tape on either side. Should be music here. Okay. Music there. And music there. So uh, that could have been the case. Let me look real fast. I don't see any notes on the cassette tape itself. They'll usually tell you one side has intentional silence or something like that. And I see nothing on the tape. That side's working. That side's working. So, it's a bit of a weird one, but I'm gonna call that a win-ish. Not sure if I'm gonna play it a lot, but I at least now have a working copy of Stone Temple Pilots Core. Anyway, I hope all of this madness was somewhat entertaining, and I'll see you next time. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give a quick update about the cassette. I've now had a chance to listen to both sides of it. I'm very happy to say that both sides do in fact play. Uh, the leader leading up to the first song trips my auto stop. But once I get past that little bit, the cassette plays like it should. It's a little warm and warbly to begin with, but it sorts itself out. And the other side is about the same. However, after the last song, Where the River Goes, there is an intentional 4 minutes and 52 seconds thereabout of nothing but silence. So earlier when I was flipping the tape back and forth wondering why one side wasn't playing, I believe we were sitting within that window of 4 minutes and 52 seconds of silence. So otherwise the tape is playing. As you can see, this is about where the silence is. There's a lot of tape left on that left reel there, and uh, I think that's what was tripping me up. So anyway, I am happy to report that I do have a functioning copy of Stone Temple Pilots Core on cassette, and the transplant was a success. So thank you for watching.